Her name became a household word because of an article of clothing she neither invented nor introduced. More in a moment. Long pants with a billowing skirt was the most practical women's attire Amelia Jenks Bloomer had ever seen. So she featured them in a newspaper, and subscriptions skyrocketed. Women clamored for more information and nicknamed them Bloomers. The church, however, condemned the wearers, fearing they would become cigar-smoking beer drinkers. Amelia Bloomer was the first woman to own and publish a newspaper. Her focus became women's rights when the Tennessee legislature decided women could not own property because they had no souls. I'm Rita Moreno, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. Her husband forbade her to speak in public or do work of any kind, yet her poetry made presidents weep more in a moment. A keen wit helped Julia Ward Howe contend with her fanatical husband. Her poetry was published anonymously until 1862, when her simple yet moving words captured the somber heart of a country at war. President Lincoln wept when he first heard the battle hymn of the Republic. When she died at 91, 4,000 people joined in singing, Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. I'm Beatrice Arthur, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. you call a hooligan. In a moment, more of this spirited suffragette. The most famous of British suffragettes, Emmeline Pankhurst, was a magnetic speaker. She led the women of England in lobbying Parliament, in torchlight processions, and finally to committing attacks on property. In jail, she went on hunger strikes and endured the horror of forced feeding. In 1918, the vote was finally granted, but only to women over 30. Before she died of complications from her hunger strikes, Emmeline Pankhurst said, let the women stand shoulder to shoulder with the men to win the common victory which we all desire. I'm Lynn Redgrave, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. Known as the Statue of Libido, she said, I generally avoid temptation unless I can't resist it. More in a moment. Mae West tickled the fancy of depression audiences with sexual innuendos and double entendres. Casting unknown Cary Grant in She Done Him Wrong, she broke box office records. Though her films were huge money makers, Paramount succumbed to pressure from religious groups and dropped her contract. Mae West wrote and starred in only a dozen films, yet she has become legendary. When women go wrong, men go right after them. I'm Isabel Sanford, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. She musical theater into its golden age, yet she couldn't study dance until she was 14. More in a moment. Her parents didn't approve of her dancing, but Agnes DeMille persisted and became one of the most prominent choreographers of the American stage. She presented American folk idioms within a ballet context and was the first American to contribute to the standard repertoire of classical ballet. Her 1942 choreography of Oklahoma integrated dance into the character and plot development a first for musical theater. Agnes DeMille's unique style became part of the American musical comedy tradition. I'm Bonnie Franklin, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women.
1895, she stood atop the Matterhorn and won fame, but what she wore brought her notoriety more in a moment. Knickerbocker's stout boots and woolen hose gained Annie Smith Peck a notorious reputation. By 1908, she had climbed higher in the Western Hemisphere than any American. Her success was achieved despite poor financing and equipment. At 61, Annie was the first to climb 21,000 foot Mount Kurapuna. There, she planted a pennant which read, Votes for Women. Annie Smith Peck climbed her last mountain in New Hampshire. It was over 5,000 feet. She was 82 years old. I I'm Anita Gillette, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. Americans know the connection between John Wilkes Booth and Abraham Lincoln, but few know a woman was hanged for the assassination. In a moment, more about this ill-fated woman. Mary Surratt was the first American woman executed for treason. A middle-aged widow, Surratt ran a boarding house in Washington, D.C., where her son sometimes met with John Wilkes Booth. Hours after Booth shot Lincoln, Surratt was arrested and found guilty by a military commission. President Andrew Johnson sentenced her, saying, she kept the nest that hatched the egg. Convicted without a trial, Mary Surratt hanged in 1865. When post-assassination hysteria subsided, evidence emerged indicating her innocence. I'm Rue McClanahan, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. When your grandmother was born, she was not allowed to vote. Today, all Americans have that right largely because of this woman. More in a moment. Her skill as a speaker propelled Carrie Chapman Catt into the role of national leader for the suffrage movement. An excellent motivator, she organized state-by-state -state campaigns. When she married in 1890, her husband signed a contract guaranteeing her the right to work four months each year for the cause. When the 19th Amendment finally passed in 1920, Carrie Chapman Catt said, no written law has ever been more binding than popular opinion. This vote has been costly. Prize it. I'm Roxy Roker, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. racial discrimination and women's equality would not be extreme today, but 200 years ago it was outrageous. More in a moment. The first and only woman to be wife and mother of an American president, Abigail Adams endured the separations of political life. One of the great letter writers of all time, she left a woman's impressions of America's revolution. Her spontaneity and ability to mingle the momentous with the intimate were her trademarks. Self-conscious about her writing, she advocated education and self-expression. When her husband was co-writing the Constitution, she wrote, Remember the ladies, all men would be tyrants if they could. I'm Elizabeth Forsyth Haley, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. Hepburn said, she had a consideration for artistic integrity that I've never encountered elsewhere. In a moment, more of this great comedian. Relying on parody, dialect, and physical humor, Fanny Bryce became the greatest female star of the Ziegfeld Follies. Her expertise at blending serious material with comedy made her a vaudeville headliner. Later, Fanny became known to a new generation when she performed on the radio as an imp of an infant who made devilish wisecracks. Baby Snooks. What comes after G? Wig. <laughs> Fanny Bryce kept America laughing for 40 years. I'm Steve Allen, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. Her motto was, 
pray for the dead and fight like hell for the living. More in a moment. An Irish immigrant, Mary Jones, lost her husband and four children in one week to yellow fever. From this ill fortune, she emerged as Mother Jones, a militant organizer. She traveled the U.S. organizing strikers, saying, my address is like my shoes, it travels with me. For 50 years, she took part in every major strike of the United Mine Workers Union. All management efforts to stop her failed. She marched till age 100, saying, no matter what you fight, don't be ladylike. I'm Nancy Walker, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. She said, there was two things I had a right to, Liberty and death. If I could not have one, I would have the other, for no man should take me alive. In a moment, more of this courageous woman. Called the Moses of her people, Harriet Tubman freed her family and 300 other blacks from slavery. She volunteered as a Union spy and led a band of black soldiers who freed more than 800 slaves. When Miss Tubman was 80, Congress granted her a $20 a month pension. But the greatest tribute to her was a $2 million wartime liberty ship financed by war bonds raised by 800,000 black women. The SS Harriet Tubman sailed 31 years after her death, leaving in its wake a legacy of courage, hardship, and humanity. I'm Conrad Bain, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. She couldn't walk without braces until she was 11 years old. In a moment, more of this Olympic champion. Stricken with crippling illnesses in childhood, Wilma Rudolph learned to walk again at age eight. The 17th of 19 children, she was determined to walk without a limp. She taught herself to play basketball and by high school was a champion. She went on to break world records as a Tennessee State University sprinter. In the 1956 Olympics, she earned a bronze medal the first ever won by a black American woman. At the 1960 games, she became the first runner to win three Olympic gold medals. I'm Marla Gibbs, bringing you a glimpse of history in the company of women. Mm -hmm. 